Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And we are going to read verse 1. Having therefore these precious promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. All right. I'd like you to picture a brand new sports car, a Ferrari, Lamborghini, your favorite sports car, the one you love to look at the most. Picture that somebody took it out on the open road, and that thing is expensive and valuable. Take it on the open road, and after the dips in the mud puddles and all the different rainstorms and the elements that it has to drive through, that car is filthy with bug, with bug juice on the front bumper. I mean, it is a nasty mess, and it needs a bath in a big way, especially after a thousand miles being on the highway. So, people driving up next to you, you've driven through mud puddles. I mean, the thing is just a muddy mess. It looks horrible, but it's highly valuable, isn't it? And you know that all it needs is a bath and a good polishing, a little buffing with the towel or a nice cloth. It's so new and pretty, you don't even have to put wax on it. It's already spotless when it comes to the wax job. You just have to rebuff it after you wash it. Now, the dirt, the mud, and all of that does not take away the value. What it does, it hides the beauty. It mars its appearance, right? So when the Bible says, <clears throat> let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Imagine a good wax polish job after you've taken your bath and you're just getting all groomed up. You got the manicure, the haircut, getting the right outfit, getting yourself together from head to toe. You're the same person buck naked and before you had that bath and woo, yeah, when you were stanky and dirty, the same person as you are now that you're all cleaned up. But the beauty of holiness shines through when you clean your act up. The beauty of holiness shines through when you pray that your spirit be aligned with the spirit of God and your heart be filled with his love and your attitude gets the right adjustment it needs. And you seek God for inner healing. And, oh my goodness, you just, you shine. And God's light shines through you. Now you were the same person right before you said the prayer. Just as valuable to God. But it's in the pursuit of holiness. Mm -hmm. You're pursuing holiness in Christ by faith, not by law, by faith. So there are going to be times because you have this treasure in earthen vessels where you're going to fall right flat on your face. Or you may have a day where you just have foot and mouth disease. Constantly putting your foot in your mouth. Oh, did I say that? Oh, Lord, forgive me. I can't say I'm sorry because I sure was mad, but Lord, forgive me. And you fight next time to zip the lip when you want to let her rip. <laughs> so you are perfecting holiness in the fear of God in honor of him, in respect of him. You don't want to play games with him. No. And you're zealous for holiness. You're not perfect in it, but you're zealous. And God knows you're zealous. That's the good part. All right. So when you have all of the effort going for you and you have God on your side because he sees you trying, then you can access the promises of God. Having therefore these promises. See, 
The promise of God, when you read the Old Testament, you read some of the law, you read some of the commandments, you read the promises of God, starting out with the promise he quoted over Abraham. Those precious promises, he fulfilled every single one. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Help me, Lord. And sometimes we are so busy looking at me, myself, and I, and all that I get wrong. And all the ways I fall short. Mm. That we just can't fathom God even wanting to bless us. But we are zealous. We're pursuing God. We're pursuing his ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're pursuing holiness. We're just not meeting the mark all the time. And because we're not meeting the mark, we judge God the way, according to ourselves. When people don't measure up to our expectations, half the time we want to write them off, don't we? So we expect God to do the same thing with us. Hmm. So what you end up doing is try to write yourself off because you already assume, well, he doesn't want to be bothered with me. Look what I did. Look what I said. I did it again. I'm, I, what's wrong with me? Flesh. That's why you have to pursue holiness. It's not a casual journey. It's a journey of hot pursuit. Okay. Verse 9. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. See, when we do wrong, we're not to guilt trip off of it. That comes from the enemy. But godly sorrow worketh repentance, which means when you mess up, you're not wallowing in self-pity. You're not wallowing in guilt. You're not beating yourself up, pouring ashes all over your head, saying, I am worthless. I am worthless. God doesn't want me. God don't love me. God don't love me. God don't. No, 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 no. Uh, what you do is you acknowledge where you fell short. And it's good to even ask God why you keep tripping over your foot in that area. Because nine times out of ten, he's trying to show you through your failure that there is healing that is needed. There is forgiveness that is needed where you need to forgive someone else. And you're carrying a grudge and you don't realize it. So every time somebody steps on that turf, you get all up in arms and overreact because that is an open running wound that you have not dealt with. And you don't deal with it well. Flesh jumps out the box. There goes Jack. Yep, right on out the box. And you show your little narrow or wide behind once again. And you go tipping with your head hung down and your tail tucked between your legs. Lord, forgive me. But no, no, you just pray and start seeking God and ask him, what is going on inside of me that makes me mishandle those vicissitudes of life? <clears throat> makes me mishandle people. How do my reactions go in the wrong directions? Why? What's going on? Show me me. Oh, he will. But he's not doing it in a uh, in a condescending or in a condemning way. It's like telling a lady, excuse me, ma'am, and they might have a million dollar outfit on. Your slip is showing. Or you may have to, if you're a brother and you're coming out the restroom and another guy's coming out, you might have to whisper to him, man, check your fly. You're not putting them down. You're not mad at them. You don't have an attitude, just looking after you, you know. Yeah, you know, take care of that. <laughs> so don't come popping out. And that way, that is uh, what you call constructive criticism. 
That's the way God deals with us. We're the ones. What's the matter with you? You stupid? Zip that thing up. Don't nobody want to see that mess. That's the way people with sour dispositions can put people down for something that's not even that big of a deal. You know, I taught you how to dress better than that. That's so why I don't like taking you nowhere. You know, what's your slit doing showing? Doesn't have to be all that. God's not a, a, a drama king. He doesn't act like a drama queen. God will just tell you what the problem is. And he'll and if you ask him to work on it, he will. With glee in his heart. He waits with bated breath for you to ask him for help. While you're getting help from God, while you're polishing up your act, while you are pursuing his promises and pursuing holiness at the same time, we walk by faith, not by sight. While you're doing all that, it builds up your faith. You read the word of God. You stay around the people of God. You call each other, pray for each other, cry to each other, whatever. You support each other. The whole time, all of you together are going after God's promises. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And the more you pursue God, the more you pursue his holiness, the more you see his promises begin to unfold in your life. Now you can go fast or you can go slow. You can drive it five miles an hour and pull over and go to a truck stop and take a break. Drive 10 miles and pull off the freeway and take another break. You can do it that way. Your progress will be equally as slow. But if you put the pedal to the metal and you are not taking any breaks unless you have to take a potty break, you are going nonstop. You don't want any distractions. You're going to focus on the goal and you're going to drive till you get there. You'll get there way faster, baby, than you will taking a whole bunch of breaks along the way. This is the way we take breaks from God's way. We go back to the beggarly elements of our lives. We do what we used to do. Right. We fall back in the old habits because it's like sucking your thumb. We need a pacifier. Some of us might suck on a bottle. Some of us might suck on some crap. Some of us might suck on a uh, a one-armed bandit, a you know, casino, because we got this little thing in us that always wants to gamble. It's a habit, and we're having a hard time staying away from it, because we're not keeping focus. We just keep taking breaks. Well, Lord, I live good for you for the last two days. Whew. Oh, I haven't done that in a long time. And you start focusing off of the goal. And now you're sidetracked looking at, at what you used to do and how good it used to feel, mm. how it used to appeal to your senses, how you miss that little adult pacifier now, don't you? Mm -hmm. So God's promises are still there. But it's going to take you a whole lot longer to get to every single one of them. Some of them you may miss out on. You may... Draw your last breath before you finish your journey because you took so many breaks. Think about what I'm talking about. You can get it easy or you can get it hard. You can get it fast, quick, fast, and hurry. Or you can get it slow. Painstakingly slow. Depends upon what effort you put into this life of holiness. Promise is still there waiting for you, but you must put the pedal to the metal to get there. That's on you, not God. He ain't breaking promises. That's on you. So I ask you, how bad do you want? How fast do you want to get there? Huh? How much do you want to get out of God's promises? 10% of what he promised you? 
30% of what he promised you? Half of what he promised you? I tell the Lord, I want all he's got to give me. I'm greedy. And I do not be, I do not mind admitting that I'm greedy for all the things God has for me. That includes healing, good health, emotional healing, mental health, physical healing, financial healing, hmm, financial wealth. I don't mind saying I want it all from God. I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit working in me. I want all of them. I don't just want this one and that one. I want them all. Hmm. I want the fruits of the Holy Spirit ex expressing themselves through my life and my character, my words, my behavior, my choices. I don't want just one or two fruits. I don't want to be one of those that bear 30-fold or even 60-fold. I want to be in the 90 and 100-fold group. I want to give God all I got when it comes to trying to live a holy life. And yeah, it's going to make you draw tears at times. It's going to hurt. There are going to be times when you want to do it your way. You just want to. Everything in your fiber is yearning for the things of the flesh, your flesh, your ways. And you have to make a choice. The highway or my way. My way will get you there to God's promises quicker. But my way, another truck stop. Hmm. Another detour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you allow so many detours in your life. Don't be careless about that one. Hmm. Okay. Thank God for his grace. But be careful not to play with the detours. This is not a game. God knows when you seriously want what he's got for you. And God knows when you really don't care. And all you want is just not to go to hell. But you really don't care if you live a holy life. When you know you feel that way, you do not want to live a lukewarm life because that's what God spews out. So you ask God. See, we have not because we ask not. You don't feel the hunger. You're going through a dry spell. We all go through it. That's part of the cycle of life, even life in Christ. You go to God. You ask God. See, the solution is right there. You don't have to drive off the freeway and take another truck stop. You stay on the freeway and start talking to God. Lord, renew my fire. Reignite me. I'm getting dry. I'm running out of steam. Help me. God, the word says God is a very present help. You ain't got to run all over doing an Easter egg hunt to find his help. As soon as you ask for the help, the help is right there available to you. It's whether you choose to access his power. His abilities. Do you choose to use the authority he already gave you? Remember, the promises are there. Right there on the freeway. But if you keep jumping off the freeway to another truck stop, you, your progress is on you. Or the lack thereof, I should say, is on you. So be careful. I don't want 50% of what God has for me. I want it all. I want it all. Everything, every exploit, every way he wants to use me, I want it all. Mm -hmm. So when I'm alone in my house and I stub my toe, I fight tooth and nail not to allow the devil's language to fly through my mouth. When I picture uh, people of God saying curse words, excuse me a second.
when I picture people of God saying curse words like, like honey rolling off the tip of their tongue, I don't give a flying. You can go. Go. Why don't you go to, why don't you drop dead? Because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you ain't nothing but a, and I mean, the words just, Oh, we had a jamming good day today with all that. I mean, it's just like party of vernacular. Casual conversation and the cuss words just flow out like bubbles off of a, of a soda pop. They just fly right up and out. No hesitation. No second thought. It's party of vernacular. Now, you're supposed to be a child of God, but you allow the devils language to fly out of your mouth to me that's just as nasty i have to picture it as nasty as allowing his turds to fly off my tongue i don't want him nowhere near me so i don't even want to engage him in my language i don't want to express the devil i don't want to express how he talks through my mouth my mouth is to be an oracle of god not and it's supposed to be a mouthpiece for God's words, not be a, a, a nasty, uh, dirty roll of toilet paper that flies out my mouth because I can. It's not casual to me. And see, that's part of what's wrong with the body of Christ. We're looking for God's blessings, but holiness is casual to us. Not a big deal. I get that. I understand. And when you know that you feel that way, don't just sit in it and say, oh, well, I guess that's it for me. I guess I'm not in the club anymore. No, it ain't no club. You take it seriously and you be honest with God and say, Lord, you know, sometimes I really don't care. I want to do it this way. I want to say it that way. I want to look that person in the eye and tell them this, that, and the other. But Lord, I know that's not pleasing to you. I'm asking you to align my spirit up with your spirit. Align my words with your words. Align my thoughts with your thoughts. Align my emotions by the Holy Spirit. And let me be a beacon, not a shame. Let me represent Christ. Not mortify him. The only thing I want to do in my life is mortify the deeds of the flesh, not mortify the ways of God or my representation of God. Hmm. So, yeah, we're not going to get it all right. You know, that's 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 why Jesus Christ came. So we have to accept our imperfections, but we don't have to welcome them. It's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference in, oh, here's a good example. Here's a good example. The difference between wanting holiness and not really caring. You really don't care. If a person comes to my door, let me just use me as an example. I'll tell on myself. My house is not always presentable. Now, what you're seeing through the computer, I know how to position my computer so you see the good part, okay? But you don't see the little mess I made around myself. You're not going to see that. I ain't going to let you. That's my business, not yours. Okay, now, if a person comes knocking on my door, they're not coming in. If my house is messy, I'm not even going to answer my door. I'm not. Because I'm embarrassed. I'm not going to let anybody come. My brother doesn't get to come in my door. If my house isn't right, no. No. Now, I can be real with God. But I don't have to be sloppy with people and let them see me any old way. No. <clears throat> so, when my house is straight, come on in. Have a seat. You want something to drink? I'm good. Yeah. That may be pride, but that's the way it is. Some of you, you don't care what you're doing in your life. It's like you know God's with you 
And you know God's with you when you go get in the bed with with uh Tom, Dick, and Harry, or you get in the bed with Sally, Sue, and Jane. You know God's with you. And you know he sees what you're doing. But y'all are rubbing and touching up on each other anyway. Now, here's the difference. Like I said, we don't always get it right. Because I ain't going to lie, I messed up too. But when I got through, I was crying my eyes out, begging God for mercy. It's not about being perfect all the time. It's about it doesn't matter to you when you're not. Do you go to God with your messy diaper? Do you go to God with your messy disposition? Do you go to God with your anger issues? Do you go to God with your potty mouth? Hmm? Do you go to God with your sinful ways? Or do you just do them? And then just so you don't get a whooping. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. Because you don't want a whooping. But it doesn't matter to you. There's a difference. God knows when it matters to you. See, I'm not trying to preach. Uh, I, I believe everybody can live a life of holiness because God enables us to. It's to what degree that you pursue it. But the reason we have Jesus is because we have this treasure in earthen vessels, which means all of us get it wrong. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's a given. Doesn't matter to you when you fall short. Doesn't bother you when you fall short. See, God is not a sugar daddy. He's not just there to hand out the goodies. Mm -hmm. While you treat him any old way. You treat his house any old way. You treat his people any old way. You talk to him any old way you want to talk to him. You represent him any old way. It's all sloppy. People can come in your house when you got dirt. When you got dirt, pile up to the rafters. You, you just tell them, come on in and make room, find a seat. <laughs> you ain't ashamed. That's just who you are. Because it doesn't matter. Holiness has to matter in order for you to pursue it. It has to matter. Holiness is not something you're going to get 99 and 9 tenths percent right on. But it needs to matter. God wants a broken and contrite spirit. God wants you to hunger for holiness. Seek the Lord and his righteousness. And all those other things will be added unto you. The promises are there. All those promises that you have lined up with your name on it. Ribbons and bows and all kind of goodies God put on your promises. Because he's not a man that he should lie. Promises are waiting for you. But you got to stay on the road and quit slide, sidestepping and taking truck, truck stop breaks. You got to stop veering off the road, taking another break. Whoops, did it again. V off the road, take another break. Whoops, did it again. Pursuing it slowly rather than going after it with all your might. Because your attention is divided. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I better keep my eye on the road. Let me take a break. Let me get off the off ramp real quick. Let me check that out. What you checking that out for? That's not your destination. That is. So when the promises aren't coming at you like you expect, you get mad at God? No. And Michael Jackson used to say, look at the man in the mirror, buddy. 
We all short circuit, me included. I've done it. I missed out on God's promises, not because God's a liar, but because I took another truck stop. I got sidetracked. I got distracted. I'm not telling you what I haven't done. We all fall short of the glory of God, but does it matter? It mattered to me. So when I found myself off the beaten path, I lined myself back up because godly sorrow works repentance. Verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, not a guilt trip, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Godly sorrow works repentance, y'all. For ye were made sorry for a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. So there's no damage done. Not when it turns out that you repent and you get back on that road and you leave all them truck stops alone and you apply the gas so you can get to your promises quicker through holiness, through prayer, through reading God's word. Are you hearing me? God's promises are there. This year can be monumental promises or it can be promises by the crumb. Getting promises crumb size. I want the big ones. I want everything I can get. So when I'm alone in my house and something makes me mad, I don't give in to the desire to cuss at it. I don't give in to the desire to call somebody and bawl them out and cuss them out. I don't give in to the devil telling me, you don't need to go to that church no more. Them people ain't about nothing. Look at that. Look what they said. Look what she did. Look what he didn't do. No. I can't get caught up in pettiness because God's got my attention focused on where he's taking me, not on what they did and what they need. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. You want to grow in leaps and bounds or you want to grow by the crumb? That's up to you. It's not a condemning message. It's just an eye opener. Leave the truck stops alone and stay focused on your journey. And apply the gas. Pursue it. Hot pursuit. Not casual. Or we'll get there when we get there. Let's take another coffee break. No. God bless you. I hope you get what I'm saying. God's promises are there for you this year. And they'll come easy if you apply the gas. And your gas comes from the Holy Spirit, God's word, and being in his presence. You get me? God bless you as you go in hot pursuit. Go after the things of the spirit. Go after God with all your might. God bless you.